Welcome back, everyone. In section 3.7, we're going to talk about the quotient rule. And I'm also going to use this section as an excuse to just do a bunch more examples of the kinds of things we've been doing with derivatives, just so that you feel prepared for the exam to do all these different kinds of questions. So there are four operations, and we've talked about three of them. Namely, we've said, hey, what happens if you have the derivative of thing A plus thing B? Well, then the sum rule tells us that we get the derivative of A plus the derivative of B. What if you have the derivative of thing A minus thing B? Well, the difference rule tells us you get the derivative of A minus the derivative of B. That was what we knew after section 3.5. Everything worked out pretty nicely. Then we went on to section 3.6 where we talked about the product rule, and it turned out that if you took the derivative of thing A times thing B, then what you got wasn't the derivative of A times the derivative of B, it was this slightly more complicated derivative of A times B plus A times the derivative of B. So today we're going to finish this quartet by saying what happens when you take the derivative of a quotient. And namely, the thing you get is this. So we get the derivative of a times b minus a times the derivative of b, all divided by b squared. Note it is b down here that is squared, not the derivative of b. I just want to make one note uh, about how this relates to the product rule. Namely, the product rule says take the derivative of a, multiply it by b, and then take a and multiply it by the derivative of b. I have to do both of those things for the quotient rule as well. The difference is in the product rule there's a plus sign, and in the quotient rule there is a minus sign. And then also in the quotient rule, we have to, at the end, divide by b squared. Now, the product rule has addition here, so you could actually write this rule either direction. However, you'll notice I always write the product rule a prime b plus a b prime, and the reason for that is to match the order of the quotient rule. This rule I must write in exactly this order, or it will not work. Now, as far as using this rule goes, we're going to use it in a way that is very similar to how we have used our other rules. The only difference is, because this rule is a bit more complicated, the algebra and quotient rule questions can get a little bit messier. So here is a sample quotient rule question that you really can't do any way other than the quotient rule. So we're going to pick off our a, and note in the rule, a has to be the numerator, I don't get to choose. So, namely, a here is 2x minus 1. Our b is 5x plus 7. And then I could take the derivatives. a prime is 2, b prime is 5. And now, I just have to sew these four pieces together in exactly the way they are sewn together here. So I am going to get a prime b, so that is 2 times 5x plus 7 minus, and then 2x minus 1 times 5. And then that is all going to be divided by b squared, so that is all going to be divided by 5x plus 7 squared. So this is what we get after we apply the formula. And so now all we have to do to finish up this question is simplify this as much as we can. Notice we have a 10x minus 10x, so those go away. And so our answer here is 19 over 5x plus 7 squared.
Let's do another example. So here we have another fraction. So we're again going to use the quotient rule. In order to do that, I'm going to need to write down that this numerator here is a, the denominator here is x squared plus 2, and then write down their derivatives. And then so all of this together, again, is the formula, which I'll put here to remind you, uh, which is going to be 2 times x squared plus 2 minus 2x plus 1 times 2x, all divided by x squared plus 2 squared. Okay, so I distributed this minus sign after multiplying this out, so that gives me a minus 4x squared minus 2x. And so this will give me a minus 2x squared minus 2x plus 4 divided by x squared plus 2 squared. And I don't think I can simplify that anymore. Next up, uh, let's start doing some examples where we mix in some of our other functions, like e to the x and natural log. Remember the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So I will get just 3 e to the x here. The derivative of minus 1 is 0. And here I'll get 2x. So following our formula, which you'll notice takes the form of a cross, uh, uh, the way I write this, uh, we'll write 3 e to the x times x squared plus 1 minus 3e to the x minus 1 times 2x, all divided by x squared plus 1 squared. All right, and so now we can simplify this as much as we can. So I will get a 3e to the x times x squared plus a 3e to the x minus a 3e to the x times uh, 2x. So that would be minus 6x e to the x. And then minus a minus 2x, so plus a 2x. All divided by x squared plus 1 squared. Uh, and we were not so fortunate there as to have anything cancel. So we can just leave our answer in this form. Next up, let's look at this one with natural log. Now I'll go ahead and note that quotient rule questions with natural logs are going to be just a bit messier than others. And the reason for that is because the derivative of natural log is itself a fraction. So you're going to automatically get a fraction with fractions in it whenever you have a natural log involved in a quotient rule. I'll note the same is also true of the square root of x, because the derivative of square root of x ends up having a square root of x in the denominator. So both square root of x and natural log of x are going to make these a little bit messier. Okay, so we've got our 1 over x here, multiplied by x squared minus 2x log x divided by x squared squared. Okay, now, in fact, actually, 1 over x times x squared is actually just x. Now, if I look closely here, I can actually simplify this more, because I can, in fact, factor an x out of the numerator. And I can now cancel that x with one of the four x's in the denominator. 
And there we go. All right. So all of the things we've learned about derivatives, all of these rules are just formulas. We just have to make sure we apply the right formula in the right situation and that we use the formula correctly. Make sure if you're going to use your notes on the test or final or whatever that you have copied down the formula correctly uh, before you use it, because if you copy down the formula incorrectly, uh, well, of course, that will cause problems. I'm going to wrap up this video here. In the next video, we're going to use the quotient rule and our other rules to review the various other sorts of questions we've answered with derivatives so far. But that's all for now. I'll see you next time.